So here, I could sum the forces, uh, but I think you can see that I would have 18 kilonewtons um, at the wall right there. The moment might be a little bit harder to tell. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I, I don't actually have this um, worked out, but maybe sum the moments at the wall equals whatever moments at the wall, 10 times two, uh, eight times five, right? Summing the moments about the wall, uh, minus 15. I would get that the moment at the wall is counterclockwise 75 kilonewton meters. All right, so we've got to, I, I sum the forces in Y equals zero to get 18, and I sum the moments equals zero to get the moment. Okay, I'm not going to do that for you. You'll have to, you have to do that. All right, so now we can draw our shear moment diagram. Shear. I'm, I'm walking along, about to hop on my shear and moment diagram. What's the first thing that I encounter? 18, straight up. So I, I'm going to want you to label all the important points. Label all the important points. Okay. Then I'm going. I'm walking along, and there's nothing in between here that is pushing me up or down. So make sure you stay at 18, right? There's nothing in between there and there that's pushing me up or down. So I stay at 18. Then I'm get pushed down by 10. So now where am I? I'm at eight. Uh, let, let me put some units somewhere on this uh, problem. Um, and then there's nothing that happens to me right here. And here, oh, look, yeah. I get pushed down eight. That's good because I end, I need to hop off and end at zero. So that's my shear moment diagram. Do you notice that that 15 and that 75 did not really do anything to my shear diagram? Didn't really do anything to my shear diagram. All right, so that's shear. So as I was, as I was drawing that, I'm just thinking, okay, the loads are pushing me up and down. Now for the moment, I need to look for, there, here are my three main thoughts when I am uh, drawing my moment diagram. I'm thinking, okay, any, any external, any concentrated moments will immediately push me up and down. So that 75, it's immediately going to push. And at the very end, that 15 is immediately going to push. But then the other thing I'm looking for is these areas, these area, this positive area is going to push me up over a time, a, a distance. This positive area is also going to push me up over distance. Okay, so a um, a clockwise moment pushes my diagram up. So this counterclockwise seventy-five pushes my diagram down seventy-five uh, immediately. Okay, then. This area right here pushes me up. What is that area? It is 18 by two. So let me kind of maybe do some math out here. Um, 18 by two, all right, 36. So if I was at negative 75, and now I would be at, I'd go up 36, negative 39. So label that as negative 39. And then do I go straight? Do I curve like that? V is the slope of M. V is the slope of M. So my slope is 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. My slope is 18. So this was a linear straight line from, the, from negative 75 to negative 39. Okay. Then go back up, make sure there's nothing that immediately pushes me up and down. There are no moments, uh, you know, in, in the middle here that immediately pushes up or down. So now I'm just looking, okay, how about this area? It's a positive area because it's above the axis and it's a positive area. Uh, what is that area? Base time. It's a rectangle base times height, height of eight, a base of three. Uh, so 24, I get pushed up 24 from here to there. So if I get pushed up by 24, 
Uh, then I was at negative 39 plus 24. I'm at negative 15. All right. Do I go straight, curved? V is a slope of M, which show me that this is perfectly straight linear right there. And then a clockwise pushes me straight up. Hey, and I, I end at zero. So I can double check, right, that I end at zero. That 15 pushes me back up. What if this had said 11? If you, if you were down here at negative 15 and the last thing you encountered was 11 and it doesn't get you to zero, if it doesn't get you to zero, you have made a mistake. Okay? So it's a very good sign when it gets you to zero. So, so then there's my shear and there's my moment diagram. Maybe make sure I have units somewhere on that diagram. Label all the important points. And also like if you use a straight edge for straight lines, maybe get out your student ID or credit card or something. And if it's straight, use a straight line so that I know that, that you know it's linear. Um, and, and you might could even exaggerate. If they're curved, maybe exaggerate a little bit to make sure you're curving at the right, you know, concavity. Yes. Yes. Here's. Yes. Because the, because that point is 18 right here. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't look up here. I'm looking for these areas of my shear diagram. Uh, yeah, so that shear diagram, that pink rectangle has a height of 18 right there. That green rectangle has a height of eight. The 10 was how far it came down. Uh, so yeah, don't look at the forces up there on the figure. Look at the height of your shear diagram, okay? Okay, 